Hello and welcome to Relax with Watercolour. Today we're going to do a forest scene with a lot of trees, different colours, autumn colours. And we're going to start off again in our traditional fashion of wetting our paper two thirds of the way down. Objects, trees, stumps, rubs, bushes, some flowers. There's a lot of stuff going to go into this. And I'm going to keep my paper flat on the table for most of this painting. And I'll only raise it up onto the easel because I'm going to put in some reflections later on. But starting off, plenty of water. And now I'm going to start adding in a little bit of colour. I'm not going to have any real sky colour for this particular painting. Just a little token colour, I suppose you could call it. So, a little touch of ultramarine blue with my detail brush. So, just a little touch. There we go. Now, that's only going to be centred in here, just very loosely. Just make a few cloud shapes like that. And that's my sky finished. There we are. My sky is done. Now, I'm going to start adding trees into this. First colour I'm going to use is Elizabeth and Crimson, which I will be mixing with the ultramarine blue. It's a kind of a purpley tones. So again, I'm taking my detail brush and I'm mixing the ultramarine blue and the alizarin. I want to keep these tones light for the moment. All I'm doing is this, putting in very light shapes like this. There we go. And again, at this stage, it's a very early stage in the painting. Just put a few more of those in there. You don't all have to be straight. You can then bring some of them in this way, or that way. Now, I'm not even going to dry this. I'm just keep going to keep adding colour to it. And after a while, these will fade away and the next tone will come in and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use now some burnt sienna. And that'll be mixed with the, the ultramarine blue as well. Let's get the tap on properly. And again, I'm just going to be using my detail brush. Burnt Sienna, ultramarine blue, mix the two. Now remember, our paper is still wet, so our paint is still fairly dry. So on top of these, now I'm putting in another color, and that's going to go through like that. Again, coming in here and there. There we are. And just to reinforce the shape of the tree, I'm taking my rigger. I'm just going to add in a little branch off those like that. There we go, just up through the sky on that one. Some here. Now these are all going to blend in with the background. And these trees are all distant trees. They're all far away trees. And as we come forward, adding in more trees and more colour, you'll see how it's all going to work out. At this stage here, I want to also get in a little bit of yellow. Now this is going to be almost like... Um, light at the back. So I'm just taking my mongoose brush. By the way, the mongoose brush is, is exclusively made for me and the program. You won't get it anywhere else. So I'm putting that in there like that. And it's almost like it's between the trees. Doesn't matter if it goes green, sure we're doing a forest. There we are. 
But those colors there, they will be representative of light as we progress the forest. Keep adding trees to this. So I'm going to take my detail brush again and I'm adding in the burnt sienna and a little bit of the blue again. Only this time I'm going darker. I'm using more blue this time than I am burnt sienna. So it's, the tones are starting to change slightly. It's getting a little bit darker. So again, that's just going to go in, as you can see here. And I'm going to keep building this up very gradual, very slow. I don't need to, to dry our boards or our paper, I should say. Now, as you can see, there's a different tone there. I'm going to add in a little bit of a darker tone of the blue on this, some of these. They're going to pick up those tones a little bit. And I also want to add in a few little branches. the same tone. At this stage we're still very far away. Just a few more in there. And once that feather's out the way it's coming out like that, that could be ivy or, or something growing up on the tree. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're losing control. There we are, just push that out like that. Now we have a couple of main trees to go in as well. Now at this stage, I just want to put in a little bit of a foliage in the a background foliage there. So I'm going to use my one of my foliage brushes, like this one here. I'm taking some lemon yellow and a little touch of ultramarine blue, I'm getting that green, a light green colour. I'm going to just drop that in, and there's a background colour here, just here and there, and let that blend with the other parts. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm actually covering up some of those distant trees. That will then give the impression that they're further away. And I'll do some of the, the sneerer tree as well. I'll block that one off there. I'll let some of the light in through there. This one here, I'm going to block that too. I'll blend that in. But this one I'll keep. And we'll just keep a bit of white space in there as well. That's going to be important. And um, let me get some back here. Some here, which fade out there. Because I'll be putting in other things there. I'm going to do the same over on this side as well. I'll just take this guy out. Because we'll be putting another tree in here. Save him and lose that out there. Now, this is building up quite nicely. And as I said, we didn't dry it. It's all happen happening very naturally. Now, I'm going to start putting in some darker tones again now, some bigger trees, some real big trees. I'm going to use my mongoose brush this time. And uh, I want to use some yellow ochre. And I'm going to use some indigo. And these are, this is going to give me some nice tones. Now I will be putting in some leaves into some of the trees as well. Uh, just get in some of these dark tones here. It looks good. 
bit more of that. Now, I'm going to put a big tree in just here. I'll start off making my brush stroke across like that. Now that's a little bit wet for me because I want to try and capture some bark type brush strokes. It's better. There we go. A little bit wet there. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to put another one just round about. I'll move over this side actually. And I'll put one in through here. So I'm putting sort of half round shape brush strokes like that. Could be a birch tree, anything like that. That's one. And I want to get another one just here. Oh, actually I'll put it here. Like that. And as you come up, smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so there we have three trees now that are starting to take shape. I'm taking my rigger. And I'm going to take a few branches coming off that. And as you can see, look at the ones we put on first now. Look, look how far away they look compared to the other trees. And even our brown trees that looked fairly dark, they've sunken into the picture as well. And don't be afraid to, to cross over into another tree with, with twigs and branches. I mean, they all grow beside each other. They all cross over each other. They don't all let each other's light through. And again, back here. There we are. And the same on this side. A lot of ivy growing out of this one here. I also want to get in more little bushes and a few other things happening down here with a lot more colour in it. Just get those little gnarled shapes like that. I want to get in some other little pieces here now and I want to start using bright colours just to enhance it. I'm going for a little bit of orange and I'm taking my, my round brush this time. Do you remember the brush? We always push it into our hand like this. That opens it up like that. So a little touch of water. Take a little bit of orange. And I'm going to start off over here. Look at that. Right in the life out of you, wouldn't it? Now, another little bit over here. Such a strong colour. Now, again, I'm going to start adding in and put a little bit of alizarin crimson in here now with that and yellow ochre. I'm going to mix those two together. And then we'll continue on the this theme here, little few little branches coming up like that. There we are. Put some over here. Some here as well. Get different tones. And again, we're going to start building in front of that again. We'll add in more, more greens and browns as we go. I also want to get in some leaves as well. So um, I might just do some of that now, just some leaves, just to give you an idea of where this is all going. So I'm going to put in, I'm adding some orange and indigo, so it's a, like dark brown tones. So 
I don't want to do too much of them, but a little bit. Just back here, through here like that. This is indigo mixed with the orange, and that lovely colour there. It's almost autumnal. A few little bits up there. We still want to see those twigs and branches coming through there. Put a few down here as well. And I'll do some over on this side. I'm gonna put some I'm gonna put some evergreens under the trees as well, just for those those colours. It's almost like a copper beach these. But you can see even at this stage the sky doesn't matter anymore. Because it's nearly all going to be trees. So don't don't elaborate on the trees too or on the sky, I should say, too much. Again, I'm just going to put in some of these leaves with a little touch of alizarin mixed in, just to authenticate the whole thing. Now, this is a bright green. I'm going to put in here and there. I'm quite happy with that. Push that open a little bit more. That's better. Just a little bit more on that. These colours, let's put here. So you can see you can you can do all sorts of stuff with this. Just nice bright colours. Nice. Now we work on our area here, our more foreground area here, and then we'll drop in our reflections. But first of all, let's put it up on our easel. I want to get in some darker tones here. Now, as you can see, our trees have all developed very nicely there, and all our foliage down here, nice bright colours. I want to get some browns in here now as well, because we want to start to hide some of these trees, the bottoms of some of those trees. And I'm mixing it, mixing it with, um, with the, some of the orange. So it's a nice brown colour we have. So I'm just going to put some of it in here. Oh, it's not opened up. So this type of... I don't want it too dirty looking. Run that into the greens a little bit. I'm trying to hide the bottoms of the trees. My main purpose of this colour. And it's the same over there. Darker tones. So you're, you're, you can use any type of colour you want for this, it's just as long as they're darker to cover up those tree shapes. I'm going into some burnt sienna this time. I'll just clean my brush. Burnt sienna. A little bit of orange. Again, these colours. Blending them. And I'm going to put a, a shot of water all across there. Now, get my rigger. Just dark tones, some here like this. Small little trees growing up out of the undergrowth. Here and there, like that. Cross them over in front of the distant trees. Make them look like it should be there. And I'm going to put in a few little, little ferns and reeds now. A few little reeds up like this. Just out of the undergrowth. 
and you want to try and keep that freshness as much as you possibly can. And I'm going to start reflecting all this into the water. All right. There's so many colors there. So all I'm going to put, put on first is a little bit of clean water. Just there like this. And then I'll be able to pull some of those colors down into the water for my reflections. Some nice reds here. Find a red, there's a red there, so we pull that down here. Some reds there, we pull that in. Come across there like that. I'm gonna put in something else there. Now some of the orange colors. Let's get some of them in there. A little bit there, just pull it in. Some orange colors here, there. A little bit here. You don't want to do the whole thing up in orange. You want different tones, different colors. So I'm going to try and get in some of those tree shapes. So what I'm doing is taking those dark tones again. I have my cake brush and I'm going to try and drop that in there like that to the side. Same with that one there. Just there. Now that one is going off that way there. We'll put him in the second. Let's try and get this big guy in here. I'm just going to use the, the regular brush. As you see, he's coming off at that angle there. So he's got to reflect into the water that angle too. That and the same here. There we are. And we do the same on this one also. And just a little bit there. So it's, uh, it allows you to do other things. So we'll push some in here as well. I'm losing, starting to lose my colours. So I'm going to have to improvise a little bit more. A little bit more here. Let's get a dark tone there. I'm going to get some indigo in there. a little bit there. I get some, some more dark tones on this side. There we go. So as you can see, it's a, an interesting little painting. I just want a little bit of foreground in there just to finish. Get some more indigo in there. A little bit of indigo, a little bit of orange. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of a land here for the viewer to be comfortable and that they're not standing in the water. And just to go with that then, a little bit of foliage here. Get a couple of little reeds in there just to finish off. And there we are. It's a nice little forest scene. It's all various trees, shapes, colours, tones, and it just shows you what you can do 
just using your imagination with nothing at all, only whatever thoughts you're thinking. So I hope you enjoyed the little tree scene and the forest scene. And until the next time, this is Harry Feeney, Relax With Watercolour. Goodbye. <laughs>